it appears to be maybe an open and shut case for the prosecution, but is it not? How, how should they articulate it in all of these different circumstances with, circumstances with these three different individuals? Uh, yeah, no, I, it's certainly difficult. And, you know, I thought it was going to be an open and shut case, but see, seeing what we know now about it, it, it certainly isn't. Um, you know, there's a lot at play here. There are varying levels of intent. But one way to mutually combat all of them is going to come down to reasonableness. If they can prove that all of the conduct was reasonable, that he had to deploy this force, that uh, that he had to, to do these, 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 these acts, then ultimately, reckless or intentional, they're going to be able to get past the level of intent. They're going to be able to justify, mitigate, um, and come across as a non-faulty party only if they could show that the level of reasonableness was there. Right. Um, and that's very specific analysis. Well, talking about analysis on the law, we can go live into Rittenhouse. Right now, the judge and the attorneys are talking about the jury instructions uh, before the jury is, ever, is, not, is not even there. The jury is not present. So let's hear the back and forth between the judge and the attorneys right now. 